guys and welcome to a new how to video this is using the gp 38 2 and gp9 rm in cn liveries both of them it's like a two-in-one cold start video unfortunately they're both off but only when i sit down will they sound off so the gp9 sounds on but it's actually off so we're going to start off with the gp 38 which is the more complex of the two okay so give us hug so we're going to climb up so let's climb up and then we're going to head into the driving cab. Okay, we're going to take our seat and I'm going to open my window. Okay, then we're going to have to open our fuse cabinet. There you go. And um, raise all the fuses. Some of them won't raise. Disclaimer. And don't spend half an hour trying to raise them because they don't some of them most of them do as you can see uh, I think that's all of them isn't it this one is the one of the ones that doesn't and that one's another and now you want to close the battery circuit breaker and you want to be testing the fuse light and you want to be testing this fuse to see if it works yep and you want to be testing this other fuse to see if it works and they both do there so given your battery is now unisolated, all your switch all your fuses, as we said, are in the raised position. You can now close the fuse box. And uh, we can now set up the train. So we're gonna put on our number lights up there, we're gonna turn on our engine room light and check that the isolation switch is on stop stop isolate. Then we're gonna want to go down here and turn on control and fuel pump and engine run. Okay, now we set up, so we're gonna head down here and you will find that in this cabinet with a window there's a latch you open that and here you've got the engine with the light that we turned on so you're going to want to this locomotive has been off the whole night so we're going to want to prime it for about 12 seconds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve just to keep it a bit more, just uh, one last thing. Uh, by the way, priming an engine basically means putting injecting fuel. And now we're going to start it. Okay, it's now started. So you just basically want to close up the engine room and latch it. So now the engine is started. You want to put the isolation switch on to run. And now you want to turn off, turn on the generator field. So now you've got the engine switches turned on. Close our door, and we're going to sit down. For the purpose of this video, the main reservoir wasn't discharged, although you can see it's starting to charge a bit. In real life, it would be completely discharged, and you would have to wait. It's this red needle there till it charges. So I'm going to put on our gauge lights, and I'm going to set up our front headlight um, and uh, the front ditch lights together with the cutout valve which in this case I'm going to set to fight and check that the MU2A valve is on lead or dead okay so we're going to now want to uh, insert the reverser well I'm going to put on the cab light so you can see better insert the reverser there you go and we're going to want to set the independent brake to full application release the brakes in this case, we did not need to reset PCS. PCS is resetted by setting the reverse, setting the reserve, reverser to neutral, idling the engine, setting the independent brake to full application, and leaving the automatic brake in emergency for one minute, and then releasing the, the automatic brake. Okay, so we're going to be using our independent brake. So turn off the cab light, put the reverse into forwards. The engine is going to rev up into a state called high idle. You can hear it rev a bit. Now we're going to turn down the, we're going to give it a notch of power, release the independent, and give a blast of the horn. Notch two, and we're moving. As you can see, we're slowing down. This is, I was just showing you the last thing we needed to do. The last thing we need to do, which is fail safe, because you just idle the engine and you feel it, is release the handbrake. 
so that's just showing you a trick there to remember if you have disabled your handbrake. So now we've released the handbrake, close the door after us, and now we can proceed as normal. And now you'll see that she rolls a lot more easily. There you go, and if I idle the engine, she more or less coasts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to park her in front of the GP9 in order to then show you how to run two locomotives in multiple. Just rev her up a bit more. There you go. Pull forwards. Is that enough? Check that the points are set, which they're not, so I'm just going to change them over. So we're heading now into this head shunt. Start slowing down a bit, using the independent brake when you're light locomotive. Now, man I'm going to put the reverse into neutral when we get up, and I'm going to manually change the points for the for the sake of this video. So I'm just going to get down. So we've gone beyond the points. So now we just switch them. Okay. So now we're going to climb back up, and we're actually going to make the most of the time we're here by, as you can see, this locomotive has got a buckeye or knuckle coupling. In this case, the knuckle coupling appears to be in the relatively closed position. In order for it to couple, one of the two needs to be open. So, I'm going to, by releasing the coupler, there you go, you saw that the buckeye opens and then the pin falls again, but it's still open, which now allows us to couple. We don't have to repeat the process in the GP9, but mind it has to be completed in one of the two locomotives, preferably in both. So just, um, Heading back into the loco, reverse to reverse, gives a bit of power, switch the headlights to reverse together with the ditch lights. Release the uh, independent, and we're off. As you can see, we've now got rear headlights. And we're not going to couple up to the GP9 just yet, because we've got to start her first independently. There we go. And just to slow her down. There. Wait a minute, give myself free camera. Just just get her a bit closer. That's enough. As you can hear, the GP9 appears to be on, but it's really not. Stop her here. Disable the belt. Put the reverse in neutral. And that's the only way we're going to leave the locomotive. Just swap over the headlights again. And the ditch lights. And that's it for now with this loco. So we're going to leave her here, awaiting us to couple up. Okay. So we're now going to go and do the startup on the GP9. which is going to appear to be off, on, but when we sit down, you just heard it shut down because of the this bug the game has. Okay, so, first thing I'm going to do, head into the fuse cabinet, and as we did before, turn on absolutely all the fuses. All the fuses, some of them don't operate, but most of them do, so be cautious. Because, for example, the, the all the black ones here on this black panel work, except for the bottom one, because they operate the engine, and the the engine vital switches. So that switch doesn't have... Usually it's ones that don't have a name on it. 
there we go and now as before we want to test the fuse light and if there were any fuses we should test them let's see uh, now we're going to close the main breaker okay so we've closed the main breaker the battery is now active we now can close the fuse cabinet I'm going to sit down to turn on my cab lights together with the instrument lights right um, so I'm going to want to in this case we can't go down to the engine room because there is no such thing I see there is, but there is no latch to open it. So we're going to start it on the fuel prime, but from here directly from the cab. As you can see, the GP9 is slightly easier to start than the GP38, and I'll just start the engine. Okay, so. If we wanted to resume, actually we need to release the handbrake first, important thing to do. You should now need to charge the main reservoir, but as I said before, it's not necessary in the locomotive in this game, at least in these. So, we should now turn on these three switches, but, um, we should, sorry I forgot to turn on the other two. So we meant to turn on the middle one, but there's a vital thing that uh, so it's just basically we we could drive it like the other locomotive and release all the brakes so do everything but because we're going to couple in multiple so it's basically now just driving it we want to turn off the cab light and gauge lights there so we've turned off the cab light and the gauge lights so i'm going to explain various things so there's various modes of carrying the locomotive you can carry it light engine just as if it's just trailing if you set this valve here called the mu2a valve so if it's lead the locomotive is just dumb and it it's just it's like an extra weight brake wise if you set it to trail 24 it only operates the brakes and if you set it to trail 6 or 26 it's also going to operate the power as long as you've turned off all these switches okay Cut, check that the brakes are cut out and the independent brake and the handbrake are released okay so this locomotive is now ready to be carried also you, you're going to want to put this into run as we did before and change the headlight control so the headlight control needs to be changed uh, right now it's in single or intermediate it's got to be changed into controlled from either end you can also change it into controlling with unit coupled at long hood end so it means that you're driving it from here and there's another engine coupled on that side and then controlling from unit coupled at short hood end which would be the unit coupled on this side but because this locomotive is going to be the one that we're that's the slave we're going to want to put it in control by unit from either end so the headlights if we put them on rear from that locomotive they're going to turn on the red the headlights on this locomotive okay okay so that's set up and also because we're not driving it from here we want to disable the alert control and safety devices okay we're set up in this cab so now we're just going to want to couple up with the other locomotive i'm going to just open the crossing so that then we, we could cross over if we needed to and the same thing on the gp38 as you can see because they're both standard they can both cooperate with each other so i'm just going to open the crossing and we're going to couple up as i said this in order the lead locomotive must have its valve in lead and it's three switches turn three engine switches turned on and now we're going to couple up to this engine and we're going to be controlling it and i'm going to demonstrate various other features okay so release the brakes as you can see both knuckles are open so it's now safe to couple we have now coupled pcs has not tripped but it could have tripped i'm just going to close my door right so at the current moment you see that we've got our headlights activated for this end i can now disable that and if i if i if you see here if i activate the rear headlights they, they turn on there but because I forgot to do the last control which is as we did before with the other locomotive lighting controls so let me turn off this control so let me put it actually back into front 
So as you saw before, I just forgot to do this control as well. We've got to put this into controlling unit at long, couple that long uh, hood end. So now, sorry for that um, small mishap. So now you see that I turn off on this end. And if I turn the rear ones on this end, nothing happens. On the other hand, if I turn the rear ones on in this end, they turn on there. So that's the vital feature of that lighting control. So now I can turn off that and I can now turn on the front ones. So now if you hear, if I'm going to rev both engines, you also, so I'm going to rev my engine and you're going to also hear the GP9 engine rev. There you go. And if I now release my brakes, let's see if I can get a spot of light. You, you're going to see the brake blocks there release the wheel. See the brake block there? It moved. There you go. And that's because the independent brake pipes, which couple these locomotives, cooperate with the locomotive brake. This is quite exclusive to American locomotives. It would also work using the automatic brake, but that's specially used for consists or non-independent brake coupled locomotives. So we can now proceed moving forwards. But we can move in reverse. So that I can show you how to couple it up to more units and how easy it is. So we're going to blow our horn. We're going to turn off our lead headlights and leave the headlights, so not lead, and put our reverse headlights on. So you can now see the rear headlights have enabled. And we're going to couple up to a couple more GP9s that are stored down the line. There we go. As this other locomotive does not have any other ditch lights, it's no point turning the ditch lights to reverse. So now just easing down the junction. Let's see. So as you can see down here, there's two GP9s which are already on. And we're going to couple to them. And we're going to want to slow down a bit using both locomotives of course now that we set up the brakes correctly also dovetail provides manuals that will make you understand this really well okay i'm just going to manually open that up. there we go slowing down with the gp9 okay Go. We're coupled. PCS wasn't tripped this time either. We're going to swap headlights uh, and we're going to set the independent brake to full application. Because now. Uh, sorry, I um, have to take my leave. back sorry about that uh, so we're back into the rear unit into the rear locomotive open the door and now because this is now an intermediate locomotive we have to set the setting to single or intermediate unit because if not the local the, the lights will activate when we activate the rear lights so we're just going to open our crossings check the hammer is released on this locomotive open this cab check that these switches are off which they're not so we're going to turn them off i'm going to personally turn off the step lights and platform lights off so we've got to now set this valve which is set to lead or dead to trail six or two six and that got it oops, put on the number lights and that is in single or intermediate unit um open these crossings again go to the next loco that handbrake is also released and for one last time set uh, the MU2A valve to trail 6 or 26 together with the engine switches into off turn off the platform lights and step lights and we want to set this to control from the unit coupled at long hood well control from the unit coupled at either end so we're now free so now all these locomotives are going to be cooperating with one another 
and break them all together using the independent brake pipe together with the train pipe and so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you one last time the lighting so now we've got two one GP38 and three GP9s okay so now as you can see again I've got my front headlights on if I turn them off and now this time if I go to this locomotive and turn on the rear ones the rear ones you'll see they don't come on if I go to this locomotive and turn the rear ones on there they go all the way at the back of this four loco consist turn them sometimes it's a bit fiddly keyboard there you go and oops sorry let me just reset that okay okay so now we set this up as you can see if i now go to the rear loco i can now release the brakes and you'll see the brake blocks release oh by now you can also hit as well as if i put it in neutral and rev the engines up to maximum you can see smoke coming out from the first one and you can see like this small grey haze coming up from the other three but you can hear them mainly so just wait, them, wait for them to idle put it in forwards release the automatic and we're off and as you can see now we have four cooperating locomotives if there's any local with this engine on that we want it just to be coasting we just set the engine switches to on in one of these and if we don't want it to cooperate with the brakes put it in lead or dead and if we want it to cooperate with no power trail two four there you go so now as you can see we've got a four locomotive consist which for example just to end this video is going to be coupled to a, a tanker con there there we go I'm just going to close my window and we're going to slow down a bit and I'm just going to open the knuckle and we coupled there you go so now the whole train is coupled now we could just uh, turn those off now just release the independent, suppress the brakes, cut them out, set them to handle off, turn on the MU2 valve to trail 6 or 26, three engine switches off, those their lights off, we've got our reverser in forward so we just put it in neutral and remove the actual reverser itself. Turn the light doesn't want to. Sometimes it's it's a bit buggy and you have to turn the engine switches off in order to remove the reverser. Hmm. There. She's got a weird clip point. Okay, and that's basically it. So now we just turn off the cab light. Now we can turn this to controlled from locomotive coupled at either end. We turn off the warning devices on this locomotive. Head out this loco just climb down climb into one of the GP9s head into the cab turn on the engine switches turn on the gauge lights turn the, G the um, MU2A valve to lead and we want to release the brakes using the automatic of course and set the headlight control to controlling with the unit coupled at long head end turn the safety devices and alerter control on put the reverser in turn on the front headlights to dim and just that's as easy as that there you go. And now we're moving off with the full consist. And you can hear the train departing. There you go. Now I can just chuck on the brakes. 
preferably the automatic. And thanks for watching. Uh, hope you're liking this very, very dense how to in Train Some World series. So yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you've enjoyed this double locomotive, double American slash Canadian locomotive cold start. And I'll see you in the next one.